There is a third temple website on the internet, which tells about the future third temple in Jerusalem. Does mankind need a third temple in Jerusalem? And why should a third temple be built? The third temple website says what the site's goal is, which is to accelerate the construction of the third temple for the benefit of all mankind. The third temple website aims to get people from all over the world involved in the project to build a third temple. The third temple website suggests how the third temple will restore the oneness of one God for all mankind. And if you participate in supporting the third temple, then you are working for world peace among the nations. The third temple website says that the divine presence will be reflected and present in the third temple. The third temple website suggests how the third temple is a matter of universal brotherhood. The third temple website says, if construction of the second temple took seven years with the methods they had at the time, we believe that the construction today will also take seven years from the start of the work. We will use modern techniques and materials while remaining faithful to the texts that focus on the subject. The third temple website says, how these plans will be deposited by the Jerusalem municipality once the Temple Mount is released from the buildings that currently exist on it. Afterwards, the Ministry of the Interior Committee will approve the municipality plans and approve construction. Our lawyers defend the project before the municipality, the Ministry of the Interior, and the Supreme Court the exact model of the third temple is already prepared and was created on a scale of 1 50th. It can be viewed at the visitor's center that will open its doors in Jerusalem in 2025. The square building, which is 150 meters long and 150 meters wide and of varying heights, can be seen throughout Jerusalem. Construction will begin once these plans receive approval from the Jerusalem municipality. The future development plans of the Jerusalem municipality to receive visitors from around the world are already prepared. Additionally, preparation of road maps, electrification, trams and all roads are currently ongoing. The Third Temple website says how combination of Israeli, Saudi and Jordanian diplomats, who will review future peace agreements, so that any nation, anywhere in the world, will have access to the Temple Mount, with full security and absolute peace. The Third Temple website says, how God is one, whether we are Jewish, Muslim, Christian or Protestant, we pray to the same God. Billions of people currently, believe in the one and only God. As such, the temple should be built, in accordance with his wishes, that he asked of Ezekiel. Now next I'll take up, the Bible's teaching that there, is no need for a third temple, and what the Bible says, on this subject, in the third temple in Jerusalem, they are going to sacrifice animals, for the forgiveness of sins. But the Lord Jesus, through his own blood, abolished the animal sacrifice system. Because in the New Covenant era, you can only be forgiven of your sins through the blood and atonement of the Lord Jesus. When and if you confess your sins and believe in the Lord Jesus, as we have seen and heard, preparations for the Third Temple in Jerusalem are already underway and moving ahead at a rapid speed. When the world sees how the third temple is being built in Jerusalem, then the false teaching of many believers about the order of the coming of Jesus and the Antichrist will also be exposed. According to Bible prophecy, the world will be sorely deceived when the false peace is made. For the deception says shortly before the second coming of Jesus, that there is now peace and safety. But this is a false peace. 
That will lead to great destruction and deception. We are very close to the time of the second coming of the Lord Jesus. Ezekiel of the Bible wrote and spoke of the temple as a foreshadowing and symbolic teaching that was fulfilled through the Lord Jesus. Ezekiel chapter 45 and 21 to 23 during the millennium in the millennial kingdom teaches a completely different way of celebrating Passover than what God had commanded. During the Old Covenant, during the millennium, the seven-day Passover feast is to sacrifice to the Lord seven days seven unblemished bullocks and seven unblemished rams, plus one goat as a sin offering. Every day, seven days, during Passover, many Jewish rabbis have taken issue with the book of Ezekiel, because many of the teachings in the book of Ezekiel are contrary to the Old Covenant laws and, for example, the sacrificial system for the Feast of Tabernacles and Passover is completely different from what the Bible teaches in the Old Covenant laws. These differences between the book of Ezekiel and Numbers chapters 28 and 29 are so great and significant that many rabbis have argued that the book of Ezekiel should not be included in the Bible, the Word of God at all. The only answer to this problem of the Jewish rabbis is that the book of Ezekiel's description of the Passover sacrifices, for example, is a prefiguration and symbolic teaching about the Lord Jesus. Why is the Passover of the book of Ezekiel quite different? from the Passover of the Old Covenant, because Ezekiel chapter 45 and verses 21 to 23 are a symbolic teaching, teaching about the once for all, eternal and perfect sin offering of the Lord Jesus, and therefore speaking through two testimonies of two seven sacrificial animals. A metaphor for Jesus, which is number seven tells of the perfect sin offering and the perfect and eternal atonement of the Lord Jesus, the one sin offering for seven days, for the whole Passover, described in Ezekiel chapter 45 verse 23, is a parable of the perfect sin offering of the Lord Jesus, which by God's decree abolished all other sacrifices, because the sin offering of the Lord Jesus is the once for all eternal perfect and final sin offering. Since the Passover of the millennium, in Ezekiel chapter 45 is completely different from the Passover of the Old Covenant period, and the symbolism of the seventh and the number one, in Ezekiel chapter 45 tells us that it is a metaphor, because the sin offering of the Lord Jesus is perfect and eternal and the fulfillment of the sacrifices that eternally abrogates all other Old Covenant sacrifices. The Millennial Temple is a parable, whose fulfillment is the Lord Jesus, which itself is the Millennial Temple, and all the Millennial Animal Sacrifices, are a symbolic teaching, whose fulfillment is the Lord Jesus. The Millennial Era's Different Ordinance concerning Passover from that of the Old Covenant, also proves that the animal sacrifice system, based on the Old Covenant order, will not be restored in the Millennial Kingdom, because the Bible's teaching on the Temple and the animal sacrifices of the Millennial Era are a parable, the fulfillment of which is the Lord Jesus. Therefore, no animal sacrifices of any kind will be performed in the Millennial Kingdom. True peace with God, and true brotherhood with men, can only come through the blood, and the atoning work of the Lord Jesus. The Bible says, that the gods of all nations are idols, and only the God of the Bible, is the true Almighty God. The coming Third Temple, in Jerusalem is an ecumenical deception, culminating in the appearance, of the Antichrist when he comes to the third temple, to proclaim his own deity, and say he is the Messiah, of the world. In reality, 
The Antichrist is a deceiver and the embodiment of satanic evil. The Lord Jesus will destroy the Antichrist at his second coming, and many of the Antichrist's followers will die in the coming of the Lord Jesus. Through the glory of God's holiness, the Antichrist will meet his death and end at the second coming of the Lord Jesus. The Bible teaches that the disciple of the Lord Jesus is the temple of God, where the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, dwells. The third temple in Jerusalem is a rebellion against God, because in the blood of the Lord Jesus, the era of the temple of God, built by human hands, ended, and in the blood of the Lord Jesus, the era of the temple of God, of the new covenant, began where every person saved by God, through faith in the Lord Jesus, is the temple of God. Where God dwells, a man can have his sins forgiven, only through the blood, an atoning work of the Lord Jesus. When he confesses his sins, and believes in the Lord Jesus, when the Lord Jesus died, on the cross for the forgiveness of sins, it ended the sin offering system of the old covenant. Because after Jesus' death, sins were no longer forgiven through animal sacrifices, but through the sin offering of the Lord Jesus. To prove this, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. This is why the third temple in Jerusalem is a rebellion against God. Because in the Lord Jesus, the era of the temple of God, built by human hands and the sacrifice of animals, for the forgiveness of sins, came to an end. The disciples of the Lord Jesus are the temple of God in this new covenant era, because the Lord Jesus died for their sins, and as a testimony to this, he shed his blood for the forgiveness of sins. The Father and Jesus dwell in the heart of the believer, through the Holy Spirit. Therefore the disciple of the Lord Jesus is the temple of God, where God dwells. Praise and glory to God the Father and the Lord Jesus.